Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of x squared over x squared plus a squared all raised to the 3 halves dx. So pause the video if you want to try it on your own. I'm going to jump right in with good old trig sub. And I wanted to do this problem because a lot of my students get freaked out when there's a squared or b or some, you know, letter representing a constant instead of an actual number. But it really shouldn't. It shouldn't send you into high panic zone, okay? Just carry on as normal. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you. So since we have a variable quantity squared plus a constant squared, then I'm gonna go in and use the trig sub. I'm gonna let x equal a tan theta. And remember, theta is restricted. You don't have to always write the restriction down unless your instructor wants you to, then do it. In this case, for tangent between negative pi over two and pi over two. This is important later when we're simplifying. So differentiating both sides, dx is going to be a secant squared theta d theta. So now we're ready. Let's go back and rewrite this integral all in terms of theta. So in the numerator, instead of x squared, we'll have a squared tan squared theta. And then in the denominator, again, a squared tan squared theta plus a squared. This is all to the 3 halves. And then don't forget this dx gets replaced with all of this, a secant squared theta d theta. Beautiful. Now here is where the beauty of trig sub really shines. What we're gonna do is factor out a squared, and then we're left with tan squared theta plus one, and then this is all raised to the three halves power. So we're gonna use our Pythagorean identity so that we can simplify. We're gonna replace tan squared theta plus one with that's right, secant squared theta. Okay, so let's see what's going on. In the numerator, let me put everybody here all together so it looks nice and clean. So we'll have a cubed tan squared theta, secant squared theta, let's just put the d theta there so we don't forget about it, over, and then now the denominator is a squared secant squared theta, and then this is all raised to the 3 halves power. So this 3 halves exponent will distribute to the a squared and the secant squared. If you have a squared raised to the 3 halves, you multiply those exponents, so you're going to be left with a cubed in the denominator. Ooh. And then similarly, we'll have secant cubed theta. Okay, And you don't have to worry about keeping any absolute value bars here because I know theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that puts us in quadrants one and four, secant's positive there. Okay, then in the numerator, we've got a cubed tan squared theta, that's a two, sorry, secant squared theta d theta hanging out. All right, beautiful. We can cancel the a cubed, and we can cancel this secant squared out. So then now we just have integral tan squared theta and simply one secant theta and the denominator d theta. So let me write, this is just now a one. Okay, from here, how would you proceed? Well, you have a couple options. Um, you could rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines, or maybe if you're pretty comfortable, you can just jump to rewriting tan squared in terms of secant squared and simplifying from there. You might be like, Professor V, that would have never occurred to me. So in that case, let me rewrite things in terms of sines and cosines and show you um, why we have to use a Pythagorean identity one more time to bring this thing on home. So if you were to revert to sines and cosines, because, you know, no u subs work in, tan squared is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And then since we have divided by secant theta, that's the same as multiplying by cosine theta, right? And that's over 1. So then, you know, I'm excited. I hope you are too. Like, ooh, look at this. This cosine cancels. I've got only one cosine. But the problem is I can't do a u sub since my single power of cosine is in the denominator. Oh no, if only this were flipped or if this was in the numerator also, we could just do an easy peasy u sub. So we're stuck. So then I go, oh, what to do? Let's replace sine squared with one minus cosine squared theta. Oh yeah, and then that's gonna help us. So I'm gonna replace the numerator with one minus cosine squared theta and then split the cosine theta that's in the denominator under each of those terms. Ooh, so slick, watch this, watch this. And then now I can rewrite this as secant theta minus cosine theta 
d theta. And then hopefully from here, you're like, oh yeah, I can integrate each of those terms, and no big deal. Antiderivative of secant theta, natural log, absolute value, secant theta plus tan theta, and then antiderivative of negative cosine theta minus sine theta. Then we put plus c. Now we have to go back to the original variable of the problem. Everything was in terms of x, remember? And we chose to let x equal a tan theta. So it is triangle time. That means we're going to draw a triangle where tangent of theta is equal to x over a. So draw you a little triangle over here. Oh, so cute. Hello, triangle. Here's theta. Tangent is ratio of opposite over adjacent. Then the hypotenuse would be rad a squared plus x squared. So now let's go back to our antiderivative. We have natural log absolute value. Secant theta is going to be ratio of hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's rad a squared plus x squared over a plus, and then tan theta is also x over a minus, and then sine theta, that's ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be x over rad a squared plus x squared plus c. And hold your horses. It is not time to box our final answer. We can still clean up, believe it or not. Yes, so here's a common little maneuver. A is just a constant. It's in the denominator. So I can rewrite this as natural log absolute value rad a squared plus x squared plus x over a. I've done this several times before, so hopefully you remember this. Minus x over rad a squared plus x squared plus c. And then what do you do? You come in with your log properties and you go, ooh, I can rewrite this as ln, absolute value, rad a squared plus x squared plus x minus ln of a, right? Yes, because we know ln of a divided by b is ln of a minus ln of b. And then we have minus x over rad a squared plus x squared plus c. And then what was the whole point of doing that? Well, this negative ln of a is just a constant, which can be absorbed in our plus c constant. And we don't have to rewrite two terms. Okay, so then now we can write everything as ln absolute value radical a squared plus x squared plus x minus x over radical a squared plus x squared plus c1. And then we have to tell the people who this c1 is. c1 is my old c minus ln of a. Now we can box this with pride. Woo, here we go. So here's our answer. If it irks you to not end with plus C, then all you do is you call this one C and you go back and you change all the other ones to be something else, C1, D, whatever, okay? So that concludes your latest integral of the day. Tell me how you enjoyed it. Did the A freak you out? Did you wish it was a nine instead the whole time or whatnot? Try to get over that, you know what I mean? You don't wanna be um, crippled so easily just because there's like an extra letter in the problem. Carry on through. You know what you need to do. And if you need to review Tricks Hub or anything else from Calc 2, check out the playlist, Calculus 2 video lectures on my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Don't forget, leave me a comment, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll be back with more content sooner than later. Bye.